Hello everyone. Thank you very much for joining us today. Um, we're about to start this great conversation with the artist, um, an artist that is an incredible, important for us because she's very current in what she does. And we admire her very much. Uh, she's a combination of a ceramist, an artist, and also a humanitarian, you know, she does lots of work and collaboration with different organizations. And today, in a day like this, that we are living such a sad moment in America and around the world, her work is actually very current and have a very deep message um, due to the circumstances that we are living now. Um, we are going to wait for her to join us. Her name is Alice Hodge and we are very pleased to have her as part of our gallery. Uh, she's very active and have an incredible story uh, of life. So we're gonna wait for her to connect with us and we're gonna start the conversation today with Alice Hodge. Hi. Hi, Hi Alice, how are you? I'm doing okay, how are you today? I'm good, and a day like today, we have a heavy heart for everything that is happening. Absolutely. And I really appreciate that you're taking the time to talk to us. I was about to cancel the, the chat, and you also were, were very concerned about it, but I think art is a way to express ourselves, and through the times, you have shown me um, multiple works that, um, talk about the union and about happiness and about equality. And that was the reason that I wanted to continue today the talk. And I appreciate what, your time. So welcome. Thank you, absolutely. I wanted to ask you, how do we meet? And uh, this kind of like the first question that I kind of standardize for everybody. Yeah, so we met almost a year ago, actually, a little over a year ago, I guess. Um, as I was finishing, yeah, my thesis show um, for my master's in ceramics at the University of Miami. And I was lucky enough that you were representing Juan Sebastian and you came to see the space and the show um, accompanying him. And, you know, we just had a really good connection, I think, on my aesthetic and my message really seemed to resonate, um, which I'm really grateful for. And I want to buy the no buy them all. <laughs> the yes, <laughs> which is what every I, artist hopes for. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I got very lucky uh, and to be able to purchase some for my personal collection. I'm totally in love with them. They're fantastic pieces, and immediately I I have to get you. So it was kind of like a very um, passionate moment, you know, for me to 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 see your work and to see how you reflect humanity through your hands. You know, thank so, you, that's a beautiful way to put it. <laughs> thank you. So, so then tell us a little bit, you know, we're gonna touch, uh, we're gonna talk about what is happening now uh, because it's a very important topic for, for me and for you today. But thanks, um, first I want people to know a little bit more about yourself, where you're coming from, how you start your career. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so strangely enough, I grew up in the South, very rural. Um, I actually grew up on a blueberry farm, so very Southern. Um, and I always had sort of a creative inkling or inclination. And my parents initially were very supportive of that, would buy me art supplies and those kinds of things. Um, and we were also sort of like the only liberal or democratic or left-leaning family. Uh, you know, our Obama signs got stolen and things like that. Uh, so certainly a very Southern culture and upbringing, which I think spurred me to use my art as activism in a way. Um, and currently, I think that my work really centers around putting beauty and new perspectives um, back into the world. Um, and at the same time, I do like to have certain pieces that really emphasize this sort of activism because growing up in that environment, um, especially around the age of 15, when I realized I was gay, 
you know, facing that sort of prosecution in this, like in my school environment where I was kind of the first one to come out, like at the high school, um, that everyone knew me because my dad also taught at the school. So we were, and because we were the liberal family, you know, everyone kind of knew who we were and everyone then knew that I was gay and it was just this whole thing. Um, and I just, from that moment, I feel that I knew I couldn't be silent. Um, and so when I started making ceramics in my undergraduate program at the University of Georgia, all my work was like screaming. <laughs> I was really um, learning a lot about the feminist movement. And from learning about that, then I started realizing how the feminist movement had become very whitewashed and not centering women of color stories and all of this. Um, and so my work at that time was really angry and aggressive. And um, I think there, let me be clear, I think there is a place for that work and I think it is necessary. And at the same time, through graduate school, I feel I was able to develop work that was a little more seductive. You know, instead of screaming at someone, I'm whispering, hey, come here, like, let me show you something instead of being like, this is wrong. <laughs> um, you know, so for me, I think all of that certainly stemmed from growing up in the South and experiencing that in my own way, you know, that kind of oppression. Obviously, it's not nearly to the same degree or effect, but um, there not. is a connection. You know, when I walk into that exhibition, which, you know, from a graduate school, your master, I, I was impressed by the level of coherency of everything. You know, it was a whole story in each individual uh, ceramic plate, but also in the sculptures, you know, and the, the, the professional way that you, that you set up everything. I was just like really touched by it. And then through, through, the, through the year that we've been working together, you know, and, and seeing people buying your work in Australia or in Germany or in London. And, and we are so happy every time that we call you that we sell anything. You know, we, we, we also believe that we are not only sell, selling an art piece, we're selling a message, a truly message uh, in, in that piece, you know, and you're very active working and also to, you're an activist. And these days are you right on it and, and, and what, is, what is happening. And um, we want to let know everybody that the Alice um, uh, we, is going to donate the entire profit of, uh, of one of her pieces, this piece that is also in our um, online platforms. And we will donate our profit as well uh, for Black Lives Matters because I think it's, it's important that art is used as a message, you know, and, and that's sort of, and that is what I, I can see, you know, every time that you do a piece, you think about what? I think about a lot of things. <laughs> I certainly think about exactly what you're saying. What does this say? You know, especially ceramics as a medium is this thing that lasts, right? It endures time. It is not going to decay in any way. So I think, you know, when I, I'm very intentional about what I choose to make and how I choose to make it and what it's going to say to the person who sees it or holds it or lives with it. Um, so I do want to talk about this piece actually uh, for a minute. So this is an older piece. I actually made it in 2015 or 2016 when um, the Ferguson protests were happening around Trayvon Martin and those deaths. So at the time, like I said, it, it, it came out of this very angry and saddened place. Um, and I didn't feel right selling that because I don't feel like as a white person, I should profit off of selling something that is someone else's story. You know, so I, that is why I focus on women's narratives and women's narratives through history, because as a woman myself, I feel like I can talk about those stories without overshadowing other voices. Um, so this piece has a quote written, written around the wrist here that says, um, there is such a thing as a nonviolent fist. And that is a quote from a poem by Andrea Gibson. And I think that is 
a, just a succinct summarization of, of everything that's happening. You know, we see the news stories overshadowed by a few um, what you might call rioters who have maybe done some destruction. And I think that it's really important for all of us to investigate those news stories further. Um, I personally believe that that is not the bulk of protesters. That is a few people who are going in and doing that. And then, you know, it doesn't make good news to show peaceful protests. You know, that's Absolutely. not exciting. Absolutely not. And, and you know, I, I think we saw another hand that, that I remember have the evil eye. No? The, yes, yes. Yes. Yeah. So it's a current in, in your work, you know, that, that. Oh, for sure. Yes. This is definitely still something that I, I deal with a lot is the hand as an image. I have this piece here um, as well. And then this vase, which we just um, are listing Beautiful. as well, called Beautiful. Helping Hand. And um, can, yeah. you, can you hold the, the hand? I love for people to see it, how, how consistent it is and how it's quite, quite heavy. You yes, know? it is. Yeah, and it's just amazing. The, every angle, you know, how three-dimensional you do the pieces too. And that is, 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 is big based on humanity, you know. I love, the, you know, the plates are also, you know, how they're just like very, very, um, you know, soft in, in the material, but very heavy in the message. You know, there's exactly. one piece that I love to talk about it, and it's this one. Yeah, I, I like this one too. absolutely crazy about it. I want to buy it for myself because it's just spectacular. Thank you. Wow. So um, this one is best seen sort of in the round. It's a little bit trickier, I think, to get the whole composition in, um, in just an image. But there are two black female figures here. And um, the piece is called Creation Myth. So um, there is the reference directly in the women reaching to each other to the image of creation that we're all very familiar with, you know, which is God and man and man and man. <laughs> and so, you know, initially the thing that I was feeling com uh, upset, I guess you could say, about is and I think this is in all of my work, is how women are erased through history. You know, we don't get to be part of the creation myth. Well, why not? Um, yeah. uh, you know, women have birthed the world. So yeah. I think, you know- we have nobody know. without a woman. <laughs> exactly. Um, so this piece for me was really about getting connected to some ancient mythology, which is something I often talk about in my work. And um, calling it creation myth was a direct pastiche of that particular famous painting. Um, and then again, by making them black women, that is another message in itself, right? Um, the world. Um, it's funny because you just finished these pieces maybe a month ago. Mm -hmm, I did. And we are talking about this, you know, which is kind of like absurd, you know, that we're talking about uh, color and about people and about class and about power it's just like I, I i believe that is people are not learning that we are actually on the floor that the humanity has put us this virus to keep us more humble and suddenly we're just talking about people's color and the skin it just doesn't make sense to me you know Absolutely. yeah it, it doesn't make sense to me but anyway you know, that's a beautiful piece that I want to show. And then we talk about this particular collection that was part of, of, of your project a year ago. And, and you get all these muses, but they all have a message in their, in their neck. You know, the silence, the, the, the pressure, the torture, the happiness. Yeah, so I'm going to talk a bit about that. Um, this was one of the crucial uh, components of my thesis exhibition and it was a collection of I think almost 60 plates um, and each of those have a portrait. Um, I am utilizing sort of these elongated forms with simplification as well so that the story becomes very apparent. You know, and I don't want any of those details to be lost to the viewer. I, anyone should be able to go and draw a conclusion from these images. And so by having this collection of 60 some portraits, 
um, being titled Some of Our Parts, I really wanted to bring together these disparate bits of stories that all women hold in, um, and the, the idea of putting these objects in the throat was a direct um, correlation to the voice and the power of the voice, the power of sharing your story. And um, I did also have, as you can see, a couple of plates where there were two figures in the frame. Um, and that was even a further step to talk about how our stories are connected and we need each other um, to balance and to support one another. So um, you can see the bottom left, I think, the one with the braids connecting yes, the braids. Beautiful. Yeah. Is called um, Rain or Shine. And the one woman has rain in her neck and the other has a desert. Um, so if you, you know, part of the lore of this work for me was that the stories are, while at the same time very present on the surface, they could be interpreted a little bit differently based on the viewer and their own narrative and, you know, their own experiences. So for me, that means something very specific. And for someone else, that could mean something different, but at the same time, still interpreting women's stories and sharing the power of that. Do you as feel free at the moment? Do, do you feel free at the moment as an artist, as a woman, at this moment in the world? That's a big question. <laughs> um, I, I don't know. Honestly, I just, the past few, the past week, I suppose, um, has felt, like you said in the beginning, it's very heavy for all of us. And on the same token, I feel at some point, a little bit useless for lack of a better word, you know, as for my own personal health, I'm not someone who can be in the protest on the ground, especially during a pandemic. So, you know, I've been racking my brain. Like I, I think, like you say, art can be an avenue for activism. Art can be a way to make change. So how do we do that? So for me, you know, we coordinated and decided that we can donate the full proceeds of this piece whenever it sells to Black Lives Matter, it, whether it sells today or a month from now or a year from now, that money will be donated. Um, and for me personally, on my own Instagram, I am currently hosting a raffle for sort of a mini art piece. And um, if you donate to one of the bail bond fund, bail funds, uh, five dollar only $5 gets you an entry. So you just screenshot me your donation and I'll put you in. That is through tomorrow at noon and I'll be choosing the lucky winner um, at 2 p.m. on live. So I just wanted to plug that really quick because, you know, like I said, as someone who can't be on the ground, it's really, really important for us to not let that be a cop out. Like, oh, I can't be out there. So, you know, whatever. Like, no, that's not okay. You can do something, even if you're sharing information being emergency contacts for people, um, fact-checking information, that's really important. Very and important, yes. As, um, as we do have this privilege of being in the art world, being artists and collectors, I encourage you to share and collect Black artists as well. You know, um, we all know the numbers in museums and how Black artists are way underrepresented, especially Black women. So I challenge you to go do some research and find a Black artist that you can support. Um, that is, I think, a very concrete way to help. And then I did also just want to quickly say about the bail fund donations, the reason that I have chosen that is because um, these people are out there risking their lives, not yep. only because of the police brutality, which we obviously know that is a risk to your life uh, if you're a person of color, but also um, the bail system in America is rigged so that it tra traps people who are in poverty or low income and then can't afford that bail, so then they have to stay in jail. And I think this is a really good way for us to support those people um, while also protecting ourselves at the same time. So, you know. Absolutely, and we are there with you 100% supporting you because what you're doing really is, is, is 
activism through art in a very uh, generating happiness, you know, and, and, that's, and that's what we can do. You know, I, I see these people on the streets walking and, 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 and uh, you know, it's enough. It, it has to stop. You know, um, people have to understand that, you know, that we are all the same, you know, and period. You know, I have been also being part of a, you know, you know, as a, as a Hispanic, as a gay, as a, it's just not easy to be out there sometimes, you know, really but isn't. never enough. You know, I think black people have it tougher than anybody, you know, and it's not fair at all. Absolutely. Um, continue with your work, you know, you, you express, you know, th th this is again uh, one of the pieces that we're going, that, that all the processes are going to go, but I wanted to, you know, talk about these fantastic sort of images that you do of, 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 I don't know where these ideas come from, and then to be able to make them, you know, you look at that, oh, it's divine, <laughs> it's divine. This is what happened when, you know, I represent all the artists that I represent. I would like to buy them all. That's not a good <laughs> business. That's not a good business to be in it. <laughs> no, it's not. I love that. I love that. Thank you. So, yeah, yeah. sure. I can talk about get on a little happier note. Yes. Um, about, about that, you know, that sort of vessels that the, the, the people can put secrets on it or water or what is the purpose? You know, because I love them. You know, I have two of them and, and I just to discover them, just to open them and, and see that perhaps, you know, I have some treasures inside mine. Oh, you know, I love secrets. that. I have some secrets and some yeah. things that I wanted to get rid of in my life. And I just put them there, you know, I think I, it's great. Yeah, so um, that's a really good reading too of the work is how you can, how they are these sort of containers for secrets. We lose you for a second. Are we good? Yeah, we're good, yeah. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, it looks like my Wi-Fi, something. But um, anyway, so they are these vessels that you could potentially hold something very dear to you in them. And then at the same time, they house these um, sculptures on the lids, which are sometimes pastiche of other famous artworks from the past that were made by men. Um, but more recently, I've sort of released that from my work. And I think that's, a, that's another tangent, but um, just really centering women's care for one another, women's joy when we're in the presence of each other, when we feel that safety. And so then by putting them quite literally on their own pedestal, right? Elevating them even from if they were just a sculpture where this was just sitting, you know, I think that is not as effective as something that has been elevated to that next yeah. step. Um, and so this one in, in particular is really about this sort of domestic moment of these two women coming home to one another and their the story really lies in the gaze for these pieces. When there's, when there's two, it is how they are looking at each other that communicates to the viewer the story there or the moment, the vulnerability. And this particular piece um, is called The Dance. And they are actually holding each other up. You know, if, if they were to release, each of those figures would fall. So it is about the power of connection and holding each other up in these very perilous times. So, you know, this piece too, I think um, the use of color for me was really important there to add um, a more joyful element, right? While we are standing on this very small platform, we are joyful about it, that we are both here and that we are connected in this moment. Absolutely. You know, and, and I think, you know, they're strong, solid pieces, but as I mentioned before, you know, they're fragile and they always have a message, you know, this dance piece, which actually now is at the Soho House, you know, it's just kind of like, uh, it's tri-dimensional. You, you can go around and move it around and you just ride all around the piece, you know, which make, you know, for us to translate the message. This, this piece 
when when I saw it, I was just unbel- it's, it's just the happiness in the world. This woman hanging the sun and the moon. Wow, this is spectacular. So yeah, she is the first singular um, figure, which was sort of strange at first. Um, yeah, I saw it and I was like, wow, that's a, that's a solo. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, and I think for me, that one was really about, you know, even in the midst of everything, it, it's still connected to everything that's happening. It's about finding this inner moment of your own power, your own joy, your own connection to the earth, to the universe. Um, and so the title of this one is Divinity Becomes Her. And I think that for all women and all feminine presenting people, it's really important for us to connect to and understand our own power as people. You know, I could even bring it back to my um, donating of these pieces. Like, this is about what my platform and my power as an artist can do for other people. You know, so if we spend this time meditating, coming down into ourselves, into the earth, and really grounding ourselves, like, we can do anything. We really can. And that may sound like a little crazy, but I believe no, it's it true. Is not. You know, I was watching actually TV like two days ago, and I found this, this scene of this riot in Fort Lauderdale, and it was this lady sort of in a yoga position in the middle of the war, in the middle of the street. And I was like, wow, that's a, that's a serious message, you know, while the police was on one side and the riot was on another, she just chose to sit on it. And it was a white woman, you know, just right there meditating, trying to do her part, which is unbelievable, you know. And, and that, for that, I have to applaud whoever is, 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 is putting their part in their own little world. It cannot be only about politics. It cannot be only about the economy. It can only, be, you know, it has to be a main, about many things, you know. Exactly. And I think that is what is so overwhelming <laughs> also, you know, that this fight isn't just happening in a bubble. This is in a pandemic. This is in a potential recession where so many people, millions of people are unemployed. You know, we really have to band together and support each other in all ways possible. You know, I was, th- I was thinking also that we, the world is on their knees by the pandemic. And how funny that people somehow wanted to be on their knees in order to to show that sort of, uh, you know, I saw also the police doing it with protested, you know, and uh, I have seen so many wonderful also stories of uh, police and they have really joined the, 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 the protester and walk with them and tell them you are right, we, we, you know, that happened in another town, not in this town. You know, right. we should not be afraid of the police, you know, we should actually, you know, be, be respectful the police but you gain respect when you are out in a very good way and exactly there are some very bad seeds that need to be exterminated you know and, yes. and it's, it's part of life these particular vessels you did it when when you know at the time that we met and it was the you know i love the detail i don't know if people can see it, of the bird and the box and the book tell us about that yeah for sure um i didn't uh i think you have that piece actually Yep. Um, yeah, okay, so I don't have it, but... <laughs> um, I have two pieces. Yeah. Yes. Okay, that's what I was thinking. Um, so yeah, so the one on the right, like you were saying with the little bird in the box, is a direct pastiche in composition of Goya's um, The Spirit of the Dead is Watching. Might be watching you, but is watching, is the title of his piece, and it's painting of a young girl uh, will not say woman because we believe she was about 12 or 13. And in his painting, she is um, nude, I believe, and is in a very provocative position, you know. And when we think about art, I, I was just watching this thing recently where we have to understand that, especially in paintings and in sculpture, every single detail is a decision. Every single 
mark that I have made, every position of the body, where the head goes, where the hands are, all of that is an intentional decision. Um, and it was the same in ancient art and in, you know, Renaissance paintings and all of that. You know, these are very intentional decisions and that makes them mean something. So for this man to be painting this young girl, you know, for lack of a better phrase, bottoms up, in, in this very inviting and disturbing way, um, really called me to reinterpret that. And so that is what this whole, that whole series of the seven um, historical jars is about, is really re, re-remembering, re-configuring um, these stories. So The Spirit of the Dead is Watching is supposedly about the, the girl waking up from a scary nightmare. And the bird was simultaneously a symbol of death and a symbol of this sort of nightmare as a thing. So, you know, the, the bird is present in, in the box references sort of like a nightstand. And then I, the laying woman is in the same exact position that the woman in the painting was. And then the other woman is cradling her head and comforting her in this moment of distress. And I Beautiful. think that speaks to women's relationship to each other across the board, across history, across time, um, and how we need to be, right? Not necessarily, we're not always like this. We're not always caring for each other, but the message is there that we do need to show up for each other in these times of fear and really take care of one another. Yeah, it's, it's quite amazing to see also, you know, how you made your, your, your artwork that people can use it sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know, so these, these are small cups where there are these amazing messages around, you know, with the form of the body of a woman, you carve them, sometimes you write on it, sometimes you carve on it, you know, and they become unique pieces. It is, is free writing what you do, or you usually write based on something that you, a book that you're reading or a movie? Um, so uh, it kind of depends. So, like with the fist quote, you know, that, that, quote just resonated with me so much that I felt like I had to make a piece around it. Whereas most of the time, it's actually my own writing. Uh, for this particular series, um, it was a collection of 48 of these cups with um, bands of my own text. You can see, uh, mm -hmm. and they're poems. They're actually love poems. Most of them are love poems. Some of them are so lovey, but <laughs> uh, love has it all, right? Um, yeah. So these cups, yeah, you absolutely can use them. They are fully functional. Um, they're very delicate and fragile, of course. So you, the intention is that you take it almost as this ritual object, which is very powerful in its message to the user, in its nourishment to the user as well, not only on a physical capacity of, you know, giving you water or wine or what have you, but also on a psychological um, level where you can sit and read these words and, you know, that means, that is going to mean something to you, so. No, no, go, going back to, to that thing of use the objects and use art, you know, it's, it's for us, you know, to see this new series that you just launched a couple of weeks ago with us. Um, and, and you used to see these flower bases that I, I wouldn't even consider in a base. You know, for me, they just alone will be yeah. perfect. You know, and, and to see how you were delicate. This is like the snake uh, stories and how you just yeah. paint on it. It's just quite delicate. Yeah, do, do, so, you, do you play with mud when you were, you know, you have a blueberry farm, your family at the same time, but your father was a teacher, but you were like right there playing with mud at the beginning. You feel that? Oh, for sure. For sure. There was always that connection to the earth, whether I was making mud pies or a fort out in the woods or whatever. Um, yeah. And I think there that is another connection for me from my upbringing to the medium that I choose to work with as ceramics. Um, and I think even further than that, there is this, this connection to the earth when I'm working, right? We can look back at this piece. There's something about 
working and being so literally in touch with the earth that um, really reemphasizes the need to take care of it um, in a grander scale. But um, yeah, I think for me, as I was saying before, where my early work I felt was really uh, like screaming, this work, I feel it is loud, but at the same time, like you're saying, it's, it is very delicate. And for me, those delicate, soft details are what allows the viewer to really be drawn in and to investigate in sort of a safe way these different ideas. No, I, I, I get to tell you from my point of view, you know, for, for now, uh, collecting photography and, you know, trying to be focused on one item and one line of work, I would say, photography. You know, then I discovered a little bit of, uh, you know, paintings and sculptures. But when I saw your work, I never called them ceramics because I just think there are artworks. Each piece is a piece, is a unique in the way that you just go around the piece and then every area you can discover. So it's truly an investment more than anything. You know, I have the pieces kind of like in, in a glass area, in a box, in a pedestal, because they're, they're just fantastic. You know, when, when we saw these bases also, which are these monumental vessels and, uh, how, there take time to work on it. Yes, absolutely. And that's another good point too, I think about ceramics as a medium. Um, it is often sort of dismissed in fine art, right? It took a while for ceramic artists to really start, even start to be at the level of painting or photography or anything else. Um, so at the same time as a medium, there is this e tremendous investment. Um, things break, things explode, random things happen in the kiln that makes your piece no longer, you know, worth finishing or selling, or there's some defect, like, and that is the sort of, um, pr like, the pro and con of ceramics, right? It can achieve this really powerful voice through being very large, like um, the vessels that you have up there are, the middle one is, I think, three feet tall and about two and a half feet wide. So, and that's the largest one of those three, um, but they're all, you know, several feet. So those pieces were definitely like an explosion of energy for me. I really had sort of shelter to myself in the ceramic studio. And these were actually made in my undergraduate time frame. Um, so oh. they were my, I feel my first really strong collective body of work that was powerful, you know, and um, it was very meditative for me to invest that really deep and long time frame into those pieces. And I think, um, I would love to be able to make large work again one day. <laughs> where, where do you, you produce at home and then you go to a place to have them done or you have your own structure already? So unfortunately, I don't yet have my own kiln. Uh, I also live in an apartment, so they would definitely not let me fire a kiln here. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, but I'm working towards that, you know, we'll get there. Um, so right now I am working in this space. I have a room in my apartment that is basically my studio and office. And um, then I transport my work to a community studio where I teach in um, South Miami and I fire everything there. So it is a little bit tricky for me now, you know, even with a piece like, like this and like this one, I get really nervous. Uh, on something that has taken that much time and transferring it in my car, you know, in this crazy city. So um, I'm, I'm working towards getting uh, a permanent studio space where I can also fire. But um, for now, this is where we're at. That, that's amazing. We want to show one online exhibition that we did where we displayed, you know, your, your entire collection well, yeah. not a selection of yeah. that place that you did, the 60 plates and, and the sculptures in the back. And, and, and we're trying, you know, through Photoshop and trying to, to really 
send the message, you know, of the plates. It's impossible to see them because they're all, you know, I don't know if we're able to grab one of the plates. I would like for people have, to see. I can bring up this one a little bit. Yeah. Just for people to understand how you work on it because you carve in this amazing, they're almost like a divine pie. Like a yes. Pie <laughs> yes, one of my professors had told me that they reminded him of pies as well, uh, which I really actually enjoy that connection to like domesticity. Um, yeah. So yeah, so I could talk a little bit about the technique there. Um, I make the plates uh, out of you know clay. I use slab work, which is flat pieces. And then I use a material for the color called underglaze and go back. And um, for these pieces, you know, the compositions are, like I said earlier, very intentional. Every decision is on purpose. Um, and so then I go back and carve these in a technique that is really similar to woodcut or printmaking, but is almost the opposite in the way that these drawings are singular and they will never be repeated as you know like an addition of prints it would never be that um but yeah so i really so this one is called waiting and you can see that there is just a chair the in chair her throat alone. yeah and even you know you signed it on the back by hand which is quite mm -hmm. divine. Oh, well this one's under the oh well this one's here yeah. yeah this one is the front yeah, yeah. this one just this one <laughs> most of them yeah. are on the back yeah i know but you know it is, you know, we want to remind people to go and um, to understand that the purchase of this particular piece, um, she and I were going to donate the profits, you know, and uh, please contact us if you guys are interested. What is the price of the piece? I remember either. <laughs> I want to say it's about 1200 it could I be it give is. or take a little bit one way or the other. Um, yeah. Could you yeah, lift sorry. it again? I want people yeah. to understand what they get it, you know. And, yeah, and so it's, it is um, about 16 inches tall. So it's pretty large. I think a little bit larger than it may look in the um, in the images. And it comes with his pedestal, right? Um, no, actually. No, wait. How do, can we see the, the button? The button, yes. Oh, yes. Okay. So it's very steady to, to put it. Oh, on. absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, Alex profits, my profits will be go towards the organization of her belief. So we are very excited to be able to, to, to help. And that's the best way that we can do it at this moment. I think so. You know, we didn't want to cancel this chat just for everything that is happening, because I believe people also at this time can take a little break. And, and see that through art and through amazing artists such as Alice, you know, to see how beautiful is the world, you know, and the, and the, we can all live together. And and I just want to say, I don't know if I'm going to say it right, but to see it from a woman that was burned in the deep south, you know, there is a white woman, there is a gay woman with a fantastic support group as your father and your mother and your family being seeing her realize as a fantastic artist and always through her message support these amazing causes you know it really warms everybody's hearts including mine so i really want to say thank, thank you, you. Uh, for giving us the chance to sell your work that's the most important thing for believing in us uh, I, I i always remember when i walk into that room and you I was like, I want it all. <laughs> like, yes, I, I it's a good moment. <laughs> and then I realized, I said, where am I going to put all of this? I just have to be, a, let's just get a couple of them. Why don't we just work to trying to represent her, which was best. And, and to see how you develop yourself in this woman, you know, that, that doing this work, uh, you know, uh, that always have a fantastic message. I really wanted to congratulate you because it's great to see you grow. You know, Thank you. That really means a lot. Yeah, it is lots of respect on my part. Do you have a message that you wanted to tell us, Annette, a final message for everybody that is out there fighting and, um, you know, giving sometimes their life for what they believe? Absolutely. Um, I, I should have thought this through, but <laughs> my message, I, I think what I'm going to go with is don't give up. Uh, take care of yourself. Take moments away from social media, away from the news because you cannot, we cannot afford to have us burn out. 
this is a, a very long fight and it's going to be a long fight. So show up and do your research, find ways that you can support your local organizations, your friends, check in on people um, and just don't give up. Yeah, thank you. Tomorrow, thank you. Alex, I wanted to let you know, tomorrow we're gonna be talking to an artist from Brazil. His name is Guillermo de Curgo that I've been represented for a couple of years and we actually haven't met. And oh, I, really? Yeah. That's crazy. You know, we haven't met in person. So we, we just talk in the phone. So tomorrow I'm gonna see his face for the first time. He's gonna see mine. But he have an amazing body of work, you know. And as I mentioned to you before earlier, you know, he's a, he's a photographer who, who through his work also um, express a lot of what is going on now. He have a, a wonderful series that he just launched not long ago called Manifesto. And we're gonna talk about that tomorrow at noon. I hope everything is gonna get better today. And we all, you know, just chill a little bit and keep expressing ourselves in a better way. You know, from both, from both parts, I would from say. From all that. sides. Yes, and then the day after, we're gonna have a Colombian photographer, Juan Pablo Castro, uh, who takes these amazing um, landscape images. And then on Friday, we're gonna have Casey Waterman, a uh, Miami photographer who does uh, lots of watercolors and prints and graffiti and public. Yeah, I love Casey's um, prints. They're really nice. Yeah, he's a wonderful artist and we're very, very happy to also have you. So thank you so much. I send you thank all you my guys love. And, uh, and all my best. This conversation will be on IGTV. And I wish you the best, Alice. I'll see you very soon. Mm -hmm. I'll see you Bye -bye. soon. Thanks. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.